Rwanda is new, something new, something exciting and something new to explore. Rwanda as a country do not want more aid, they want, they want trade, they want investments. The Rwandan economy is still young but growing fast and I think when you look at the safety and security that tells you a lot. The last World Economic Forum parameters on Rwanda regarding security for people visiting Rwanda is actually number nine in the world and uh, Norway is number seven. So even in Rwanda air, when you are landing, they announce, um, for those who have plastic bags, you have to pass through the environment desk and you get a bag. The plastic bags are you know, contained at the airport and they are burned. There's a major change of attitude towards visitors and people from outside Rwanda coming into Rwanda today. So you have to go to Rwanda, you have to get to know people, you have to get to know um, how things work there, and you should try to find a local partner. There is an opening for free investments. There is regulations on how to be able to invest. The same thing with corruption. If corruption is a zero tolerance to corruption, and it's actually happening. You see it immediately drive into Rwanda. You can see you meet the police, and uh, they have a sign saying no corruption. The Rwandan government are very goal-oriented. They really want to have results. They want to see uh, how Rwanda can grow and they work very hard. And I think what they have done, setting up the Rwanda Development Board, uh, it takes one day to register a company and the government is very accessible for business. So there's a lot of opportunity in Rwanda in terms of investment, in terms of development. Ten years ago, their budget was something like 60% um, uh, foreign aid. This year it's 11% and the income comes from internal generated income, like taxes. You have a middle class which actually represents a, a market. And since Rwanda is now trying to build uh, themselves as a regional hub of East Africa, with East African uh, custom and, and uh, relationship with the other countries, they're able to actually create a, a market or establish a market uh, of 125, 130 million people. Why can't we become the African hub for the conferences and events? And so Kigali Convention Center was born. Rwanda is safe, it's secure, it has everything you need. Marriott is here, Radisson Bru is here, Kigali Serena is here. And once you start having all of them in the city, that's when the big convention starts to happen because everybody has a brand they want to stay with. I think uh, Rwanda is special in, in terms of having 64% women in parliament. It's the highest in the world. I mean, you, you find women being heads of institutions and, and directors of, of, of a number of, of, of businesses and, and government institutions. It shows that the leadership has a tradition of not being afraid of hiring women. Ten years ago, Rwanda has 499 tourists. 2016, 1.3 million tourists entered Rwanda. Five volcanoes, what lives there? The mountain gorillas. And they have just increased the price to visit the gorillas, but it's not because they want to make money. It's because they want to actually have a long-term ecological approach to, to uh, conserve the, the, the gorillas. This once-in-a-lifetime experience of watching them, you're not supposed to touch them and you're not supposed to be there longer than one hour. The group to visit the gorillas are only five or six per group mm -hmm. and when they come down again there's always uh, some cultural Rwandese dancing or showing of natural ways of doing things and at the same time so that you combine um, these the cultural aspects of, of people living there. So we want conscious travelers and we are targeting high end because those are people who travel and they say, if I'm spending this much money, how much of this goes to the conservation? How much of this that goes to the local community? The reason we are not like advocating for the mass tourism, is because Rwanda is very small, but we also have to protect it if we have to still have the endangered species in 50 years to come. I think there are many 
advantages to coming to East Africa. Come to Rwanda and trek God leaders, come to Rwanda and visit the Big Five, come to Rwanda and see the land of a thousand hills, because that is where the opportunity is.